Welcome to Meet the Candidate 2021, and my guest for this session is Christopher Savage, who is running for Spokane City Council in District 3. Welcome, Christopher. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I should have asked you before if you prefer to go by Chris or Christopher. Uh, Christopher is a little bit more formal, but, you know, with my friends and family, Chris is okay. <laughs> Just, I, because I have a different name, I try to be <laughs> conscious of others. So, uh, starting with a question and with friends and family, where did you grow up? Well, I uh, grew up right here in Spokane. I wasn't born here, but um, I was raised here. My mom brought me and my brother over here uh, from Scottsdale, Arizona when I was around three to four years old. And uh, I grew up right over in the Indian Trail neighborhood in the same area for about 20 to 25 years now. I went to uh, the Indian Trail uh, Elementary School. Then I went to uh, Salt Middle School. And then I graduated from uh, North Central High School in 2009. Okay, so you are you are well rooted and able to play the uh, the Spokane cocktail party game of where did you go to high school? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with that uh, with that background, what kind of uh, first jobs did you did you perhaps pick up in the Indian Trail neighborhood? Uh, well, technically, my first job might have been I, when I was a food uh, prep server. When I was uh, actually at North Central High School, there was a little bit of a program when you could actually, if you wanted to, work for the uh, cafeteria and also get free food afterwards. So the free food was kind of the big up for it. But I also like serving my fellow peers along with some of my friends who also did the same thing. But my actually first job was being a pool boy over uh, at Empire Pools. It's not over there anymore in the Wandermere Center, mm -hmm. but um, I cleaned, maintained pools uh, for over about a half, over the summer. It was a pretty hard job. There were some times where you're, you know, doing the lining of a pool that takes about 12 to 16 hours. and you never realize how hard it is to do that kind of work, but I did pools all over the five mile area as well as the Colbert area in Mead. And it was interesting to see the colors of pools. You'd see sometimes brown pools, uh, green pools, and sometimes even pink pools because of the chemicals that sometimes got screwed up in there that you'd have to fix when it's going there again. <laughs> oh, okay, there's a lot more to that than I thought. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so with that background, then what kind of education and training did you pursue after high school? Uh, I went to uh, Western Washington University to pursue a degree in politics, philosophy, and economics with a minor in the German language. I wanted to do that to, uh, I kind of got the idea from Thomas Hobbes, the Leviathan, where I want to, uh, if I want to make sure that I'm going into politics or government or any sort of leadership role, that I would want to make sure that I know what I'm doing with all uh, economics, philosophy, and politics. And I felt like that was a good degree to attain to help out and be knowledgeable in what I pursue. Okay, so what have you been pursuing uh, to, if, since you're not cleaning pools now, what are you, <laughs> what are you pursuing now as a, for a career? Uh, for the past couple of years now, I've been actually been heavily involved with the uh, Spokane County and the Spokane City. Um, I'm the vice chair of the Salary Review Commission, which uh, sets the salary of all the city council, the council president, and the mayor, respectively. I'm also on the uh, Spokane County uh, Water Conservancy Commission Board, which um, a lot of uh, developments that are happening out in Spokane County, like one off of Sundance, has to go through our committee to make sure that water rights are transferred properly and that we're not overusing our finite supply of water that comes from our aquifer. And that's just a small amount of it. I'm also um, involved with a nonprofit called Meals on Wheels. I'm on their board member. I'm the secretary there. But before that, I, uh, before the whole COVID stuff, I was delivering to seniors and more mobile citizens around the route up in the Northwest to help out my community because that's kind of where this all comes from is I want to help out more of our elderly citizens, more of our older citizens that seem to kind of get the, uh, put on the back burner and kind of get forgotten about. And I don't want to do that. So I, that's why I joined that in, uh, organization. Well, that's an interesting background for a city councilman because that does that's that's beyond doorbelling. Oh yeah. <laughs> in uh, what what's a uh, is there an interesting anecdote from from your experience there that has that is that prompted you to run for city council? Uh, with Meals on Wheels, you mean? Yeah, or, or it, what? Basically, what what prompted you to to step up to run for office? You're you're already involved. Oh. Why why take this next step? Oh well, it was a lot of uh, it came from something else that I used to go to uh, when public forum was still available to the public before the whole COVID thing. I would be going down there every week to put in my voice as I thought that was your civic duty to go down and say, you know, if you approve or disapprove of the ordinances legislation that your city council is approving, because that's how sometimes they get their whether they should vote no or yes is when you go down there and say, hey, this is not a good idea or this is a, a, a bad idea or a good idea. And it was kind of disparaging to see not more people take advantage of that. And that's why I started wanting to run is because I didn't see anyone going down there to city council that would put in their name to run again because going down to city council and the legislative sessions, you learn a lot and you learn how to better operate the city if you vote correctly. Okay. So what, uh, one other question I do ask people sometimes is what have you learned from, from, uh, from travel? Is there some other place that you've been that's given you a lesson that you brought back here? Um, probably have to be from college when I went over to Western Washington University. This is kind of a 
maybe a weird anecdote, but um, there, there was this weird kind of uh, east-west kind of, I don't know, characteristic that everyone thinks that you, you, you are. Like when I wore one over to college, people thought I was this rural bumpkin that was a farmer. And I'm like, I, I lived in the suburbs, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. But <laughs> there's this weird kind of, um, I don't want to say that uh, look down, but there's a different concept of what they see the east side as. And it's, mm. to me, I thought we were all Washingtonians, but it seems like there's kind of a cascade divide on whether you're on the left or the right for the mountains. And it's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, it, it is unfortunate, but it is interesting that you've had that experience from, from both sides. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I uh, as I told other candidates here, um, the, I saved that last minute of the video for you to give your elevator pitch to answer the question directly. Why should people vote for Christopher Savage for Spokane City Council? The reason people should vote for me is that I'm consistent. I was here before the pandemic. I was there during the pandemic and fingers crossed after the pandemic. Um, what you're voting for me is consistency. I'm going to be there for the voters, for the people who are going that you're taking your taxes from and not just going up there and thinking what I think is best for everyone. I'm going up there with the people in mind and not just my uh, direction in mind. And with some of the other candidates, um, I've been going to a lot of meetings and um, I wish I saw the other candidates there. Uh, I would throw down my support to any of the others if they were doing what I was doing. And it's just unfortunate that no one else is putting their time and dedication into that kind of just simple kind of attending a meeting because that's all it is this meeting and listening to people and trying to find out the right solutions and unfortunately i'm the only one that seems to be going to these meetings and these kind of discussions and it's unfortunate because i wish more people did okay christopher savage candidate for spokane city council involved and uh, paying attention thank you okay thank you for coming what does it mean to be awake it means to truly understand the issues facing us and actively participate as a citizen in this country. One way you can do that is by voting your values based on the Word of God. We believe We Vote has done the research and provides you the information you need to make an informed decision on which candidates will champion our values and work for us. Now is the time to rise up, get involved, and vote. We believe we vote.com. Hello, Spokane. This is Governor Mike Huckabee. I'm going to be speaking at We Believe We Vote's October 2nd fundraiser. It's more important than ever for Christians to come together and to vote. I'm looking forward to seeing you on October the 2nd of this year. For tickets to the event, go to We Believe We Vote.com.